Okay, I took a break from this video and in the meantime I made the textures for the casing of the door and I applied a brown color to the door knob. This is uh, just the ambient occlusion map what we have in a brown color applied to, to it which looks very good to me and this is thanks to the specular or shininess map that's also applied to this uh, model. So let's talk a bit about specular or shininess maps. Specular maps are used to regulate light reflection on an object. For our door, this is the specular map for the front of the door. This is the one for the handle. Now to better see what's going on, let's create a light in here. And maybe turn on night. Okay. So now we can see how our light is reflecting on our door and we can immediately see there's a difference between how it's reflecting on the doorknob than on the door surface itself. And this is mainly because of they have different glossiness settings. If we're going to look here at the texture tab, we have first of all our texture, then bumpiness, we'll talk about this later, and shininess over here. Here we see our map applied, and here the amount of glossiness that's applied to this door surface. We have 90 here for our faces here, and here we have 120 at the doorknob. Adjusting glossiness depends a lot on the texture you are using. There are two questions to ask. How smooth is a surface? For example, a wood beam can be rough or smooth finished. And how shiny is its material? Because the wood material itself can be quite dull or being oiled and shine paled, shiny paint applied. So the more smooth the surface and the more shiny its material, the higher the glossiness value should be. If you are going to increase the value here on the door, say from 90, I'm going to make this 120, you can see the difference in reflection. Let's go even higher to 180 and it gets like this. But we can also change the spec map itself in our image editor in order to have a higher or lower reflective nef to start with. This will improve the in-world glossiness control for the texture in mind. So let's go to GIMP and take a look at that. So I've downloaded the spec map from Second Life and opened it as a layer here in GIMP. Um, as you can see, the map is in gray shades. The brighter sections are, the more they will reflect, reflect light, the darker they are, the less. So if we are going to change the overall brightness of our map, we can change the starting values for our glossiness we have in uh, Second Life. So let's duplicate this map two times. And first of all, we can go here to colors brightness contrast and here I can uh, change the brightness or the contrast of my map and say for the brightness let's add 40. Okay give us this and then the other one we're going to make darker back to brightness contrast and say for darker I'm going to go a bit further minus 60 and give this this map. So we get this darker map and this lighter map I'm going to export them and let's take a look at what's happening when we apply them in Second Life. I took two copies of the door and set the glossiness at 120 for now. So let's apply our new maps. Plus 40. And here on this one, specularity map minus 60. So the first thing what we can see is for the same amount of glossiness, we have a different amount of reflection from the light map and the darker map. A second thing is, what if we are going to set this door to the same amount of reflection, trying to get this amount of reflection on this door by changing its glossiness value? Let's raise 150. Hmm. 170, 
yeah, something like that. So here we have the same amount of reflectiveness on the door. And what we see is the lighter map, the reflection is much more spread than on the darker map, where it's much more concentrated. So this is also something we can play with. This, of course, um, goes for the same amount of reflection we want to have. Because if we are going to, to set this to 170, well, we get much more light, light reflected. We don't want that. We want to have to see the same for the same reflection. We can conclude that the lighter the map, the more spread our reflection will be. The darker the map, the more concentrated it will be. In GIMP, we can also change just a section on the map. With the select tool over here, I can just select this part of the map and then uh, change the brightness on that section only. And this way you can uh, further refine your, uh, your specularity in Second Life. Now, the map that is currently applied to the model is one that is made based on the geometry. But, as we know, we have also been using this wood texture and I have a specularity map for the wood as well. So we want to combine the two to have effects for both the model geometry and the texture we have applied in specularity. And we're going to combine them again in GIMP. So I have my model's specularity map as a layer and on top of it I have the one from the texture and uh, we're going to blend them together and this time we're going to use a blend mode called overlay. Now this is making the map uh, darker so and now we would have too much influence from the texture so we're going to make this uh, texture layer brighter. Changing it something like that. Okay, if it would still be too bright, but it's okay, we can also change a little bit the one from the model specularity map as well. Um, okay, let's export and take a look in Second Life. I took two fresh copies of our door and let's apply our combined map. And we can see this one looks a bit more alive than that one with the combined specularity map. And finally we get to the normal map or bump map which can be used to add detail to a, a model. Um, often this is uh, related to the texture um, but as this texture here is a bit rough the result will not look that good but I made two bump maps just to show you how it looks. So this is one and this is based on the texture and I've and made an exaggerated one to really show the effects of what bumpiness can do. But as I said this is not looking um, really good. So what we are going to do with our door here, we are going to use a Zimberlap material. Um, the normal map from, uh, this is from uh, the fine interior set and we're going to use the first one here uh, with intensity 1 going to apply that one to our door um, the direction is not correct so I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees like this and this is still very rough but I'm going to multiply horizontal and vertical scale by 10 and then we get this um, fine grain appearing on the door and we can see with all our maps combined how different this looks. This was already looking quite good but now we have a much better result with all our maps combined. One last thing I should mention about maps is that parts of a model can share the exact same UV space, which is the case with our handle here. Um, we have one at the front of the door and one at the back of the door. 
they uh, are exactly the same models and have been given the same face and also the UVAs are um, placed at the same location in a two-day space. As you can see here, this is the UV map. There's only one handle appearing here. Well, because they have been both laid out exactly the same and placed at the exact same location. Um, this means that when you apply a texture, the texture will uh, appear exactly the same on both of the models and there's nothing you can do about that. Um, this has been done because this is a door with a lot of detail to keep uh, land impact acceptable. Um, this one is 1.4 in land impact um, and not using too many maps and faces just helps to, to keep, uh, keep this low. So. Now, the way we have been uh, texturing this door relies on a uh, one-by-one texture ratio, um, which means the horizontal and vertical scale should be one. Uh, well, we made an exception for the bumpiness, but uh, for texture and shininess, it will always be like that, and we cannot change this, because uh, when, then we get a, a result like this. So uh, for this way, style of texturing, we, it has to be a uh, one-by-one. However, in Second Life, we can use repeats. Um, it's another way of texturing. I call it direct in-world texturing. So in the next video, I'm going to talk a bit about that as well. This was it for now. Thank you for watching. Have fun building and see you in Second Life.